It's 19 minutes past seven now. Time for a look at this morning's papers. We have Rabbi Laura. Well, we're going to talk to Rabbi Laura Jana Klausner. She's here to tell us what's caught her eye in just a moment. But first of all, let's take a look through the front pages. Sunday Times. Uh, this quote, we've been talking about it all morning. Uh, David Cameron's given an interview to an American television network. Uh, the headline there on the Sunday Times PM, uh, Britain will bomb ISIS in Syria. Uh, the Mail on Sunday for you, uh, talking about Tory unity being shattered last night after Boris Johnson told David Cameron to stop George Osborne and Theresa May plotting to wreck his chances of becoming Prime Minister. Very much dominated the news yesterday, uh, the picture of uh, the Queen uh, taken such a long time ago doing that Nazi salute, and now it says, uh, Royals told open archives on family ties to Nazi regime. This is a call from a historian saying that uh, the National Archives are very often uh, made public and that the Royal Archives should follow suit. Uh, Sunday Telegraph, uh, leading with that story we've been talking about this morning, about radical changes uh, in the way the NHS diagnoses and treats cancer could save 30,000 lives a year by 2020. And back to that story, this is the front page of the Sunday Express saying, uh, an exclusive here saying, the truth about the archive film footage in which the Queen appears to be making a Nazi salute was that she was actually just waving. Oh, well, let's talk to Rabbi Laura Jana Clausen. And now, morning to you. Lovely to morning. see you morning. again. Lovely to see you too. Uh, let's take a look at your choices then. And uh, first of all, mental health care in, at A&E. Obviously, we've been talking about the cancer strategy today, yes. but, but you focusing in on this, uh, a five-year plan potentially uh, for, for changes there. Well, it's emergency. not just changes. It's equalisation, which is wonderful. It's saying that mental health is as important as physical health. Mental health is the number one reason that people go off on disability or have disability. Um, there are one in four of us suffer from mental health, including myself in the past, or mental un unhealth. So I think it's a wonderful thing that not only are we moving away from a stigma, we're saying this is vital to us as individuals and as a country. It's excellent. Because, obviously, we've heard about um, s such a lot of demand on, on A&E, haven't we, in terms of the number, the footfall of, of patients, and, and really so much still needs to be done. But if you don't look at it as A&E and you look at it as the holistic health of Britain, yeah. if we prioritise mental health and make it equal to physical health, fewer people will come into A&E in the future. Because long term, it's an investment in all our health, because if we... Um, mentally well, then we can also have far more resilience in our physical health. Mm. Makes sense. Uh, Sun on Sunday today. This is Louise Mench's former MP, of course. This is her column. Uh, ignore the picture of David Cameron being a attacked by seagulls, <laughs> according to this makeup here. Uh, and it basically says the headline Make prisoners learn three R's so they don't lag behind. Tell yeah. us your views on this. Well, this is excellent. This is a plan to bring uh, learning into prisons and I remember being here not so long ago and talking about books being banned in prisons this is the mm. absolute opposite this is saying for prisoners to leave prison and to have a future in employment we are going to enable them to learn more to study and to get degrees and to get qualifications that's a fantastic way for for Jews we look at everything as the possibility of being restored of repenting and of being renewed so in order to do that you need to give people the tools so rather than being in a cell on your own with, or with other people, probably five other people, and your own thoughts, here you are being able to stimulate thoughts and also move people on. So when they come back into society, they will be in society. And again, we hear so much, don't we, that there aren't enough prison staff to mm. give the prisoners that sort of, uh, not quite freedom, but the ability to do these sort of other activities. Yeah, it's not giving them freedom there. It's saying you are still incarcerated, yeah. but when you come out, you will have freedom. Mm. 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 Right, sport. You've chosen a story um, here for us this morning. <laughs> I have. I, I want to be not questioned about the details of the cricket. Right, OK, then. <laughs> but so what, what caught I, your eye in this, then? What caught my eye is how wonderful it is that now, for the first time, England's cricketer women are professionals and, will be able, and have been able to train six times a week. So it's A, about valuing women as professionals, but also the standard of women's sports will go up because they will have the time to train. And they are meeting the Australians um, in Canterbury later on in August. And they plan to, which I love, um, 
exploit the Australians' relative rustiness in English conditions, which I think is a great pun on the rain that we might have. And for years, they've done very well. Yeah. That's you right. know, they won the World Cup and, and they've been the, the, the best cricket team that we've got. Yes, Although, I'm know. glad I know that information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you do. Um, and, you know, we're, we're in a bit of trouble in the Ashes today, it has to be said, so, so maybe the women can bring us a bit more success in the years to come. Well, that's right, and it's about sport reflecting society as a whole. Yes, yeah. yes. And, of course, the uh, England women's football team did really well too recently, didn't they? Yes. Uh, this is a funny story. It's one of those, you know, whenever it's hot, we struggle, whenever it's cold, we struggle. <laughs> we're good. We live in a, in, a, in a temperate climate, so we do seem to struggle at both ends. Uh, this is in, again, Sun on Sunday, Kids Fast Walk Ban. It's this little tiny bit just <laughs> yes. here, not much to look at, really. So... Uh, tell us about this. <laughs> In trying to look after children, um, in one primary school, the kids were told, don't run, it's too hot, don't do running games. So the kids, of course, are finding a way through this, so they did speed walking games, sound sensible. They then got a red card for walking too fast. <laughs> so I think it's probably a bit excessive. Was it, was it actually sports day, or have I got that wrong? No, I think it wasn't detail, sports it day. Wasn't actual, it was just normal play been... in the playground on the hottest day of the year. So the school is trying to look after them, but this idea of them getting a, a red card for speed walking, see, rather than why don't you give them a, an orange card for having drunk three glasses of water? Get people used to drinking in the heat. Do it through reward. You are right, though, aren't, they? aren't you? Because quite often people get very anxious about the, the heat. Mm. Kids getting overheated. We're told you've got to put, put on sun lotion before they go to school because most of them broken up now That's on, right. on Friday yeah. anyway. So obviously the, the right. teachers will be perhaps uh, wiping their brow. I think we haven't got to worry about <laughs> it too much. But, yeah, the sort of the sunscreen... And the drinking the and hats. Them. Exactly. You, rather than saying don't run, doesn't really deal with it. If you were to say be kids and have hats bring water in and put sunscreen on, then we learn habits for adulthood. Yeah, but we do love these stories, don't we? They're we hilarious. <laughs> Whether it be banning conkers or running in the playground or whatever. I mean, it's the usual thing. It's not a great deal of detail here, but one of the mums is saying it's punishing children for being children, and the head teacher saying, well, of course, safety is paramount. And you can see it from both sides, really, can't you? Yeah, but I think if safety is paramount, it's a little bit like the mental health story we started mm. with. Look at the whole and think, how are we going to educate people to be healthier? Yes, and I mean, going back to that mental health story that you were talking about, I mean, it was said, wasn't it, that for, for too long mental health services have not had the money they need or been given the priority they deserve. I mean, do you think, though, that that is changing? Because I know certainly here on, on Breakfast we've reported about mental health quite a lot and that there are different initiatives now certainly trying to achieve that. Well, I've had lots of experience of this as a rabbi, as a family member, and uh, until... Up till now, we've had this terrible situations where crisis centres are closed on the weekends, um, things are not linked up holistically, there are not mm. enough places, there's not enough care. I've tried to refer people, I, I can't even count how many mm. times, to doctors for mental health care, and they haven't been able to provide. So I, mental health has not been treated well. Yeah. Um, and I'm re that's why I'm so happy about this, because it is the underlying... You know, clock ticking in all of us of how we function, how is our mental health, and then it feeds into our physical health. And of course, it's also connected to prisoners. If you enable prisoners to learn and feel better about themselves, then their mental health will be better, and when they come out, they will function better. Mm. It's all linked up our mental and physical health. And you've taken us all through your stories very nicely <laughs> there, very neatly, connected. Laura. Thank you very <laughs> much. We've, we've had the whole approach. We'll talk to you later. See you later. Uh, we're sport this morning. We're on BBC One until nine o'clock.